So I'm going to start out the study with Psalm 19. And um, and I, I've been covering Psalm 19 and going over it, but I, I prepared some slides Yep, in PowerPoint that I wanted to show you. So uh, a word of wisdom from our Heavenly Father in Yeshua's name. So just getting started out here. Um, hi, Rick. How you doing? Good evening. Um, so you start out in Psalm 19, and these first few verses in Psalm 19 are describing the heavens and the stars above as if they were like storybook or um, some kind of textbook. So they have words to declare the glory of God. The firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day they utter speech. Night unto night they show knowledge. There's no speech or language. All this, all the words being used to describe, um, to describe the heavens, um, are literary terms or terms you would use to describe a book or you know something like along those lines, where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone throughout all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. So now the sun is personified as um, as if human. We're given, you know, those uh, characteristics. Which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. Now... So that's Psalm 19, verse 5. Uh, this is picturing, see, when you go back to verse 4, in them, the stars, hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. And um, so just as the sun is put in the stars and, and he comes up each morning, then that is, just like that is the bridegroom coming out of his chamber, just like the sun rises. So it's a comparison with the sun. They're saying the sun pictures a bridegroom coming out of a chamber. And in Hebrew, the word chamber is, um, let's see if I can show you here. The word chamber, uh, hupa, <laughs> which some of you probably already know that word chamber uh, canopy but in the we'll go to the Strong's um, let's see translates once as closet defense chamber room canopy closet canopy chamber but it's from 2645 kapa and that is um, to cover overlay wainscoted wainscoting is like the stuff that covers the wall covered with boards or paneling <laughs> or that <laughs> to cover to be covered to cover over so um so that is interesting if you go back to Psalms 19 and you see there that uh, verse 4 is kind of setting up the parable and verse 5 the sun is being compared to a bridegroom and we know Jesus Christ is our bridegroom coming out of his chamber so the sun comes out of the chamber of darkness basically and rises and rejoices as a strong man to run a race and the word strong in Hebrew is Geber which also means giant so of course the the, the sun compared to the earth or any planet really is a giant so and then his going forth in verse 6 is from the end of heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. So because of the circuit, because of that circuit of the sun, nothing escapes the heat. So that's how the light gets to every part is because it's going in this circle pattern um, from our perspective. Now, is the sun actually moving or are we moving? Um, 
The answer is in the next part of Psalm 19. And this is where my presentation is going to come in. Um, verse 7, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. So I'm going to start this PowerPoint presentation here. Let's see if I can uh, get this working. And I'm going to hit uh, reading view. Okay. So you can see here in my presentation. I'm trying to see if you can see my, yeah, you can see that. Okay. So what I'm showing here is the um, only astronomical laws. So we're looking at Psalms 19.7. So if you remember, Psalms 19.7 says that the, the law of the Lord converts um, or turns a human soul from darkness to light. So the law of the Lord is, uh, the word convert is an astronomical term. So the word of the Lord is being um, described using astronomical laws. Well, why would the psalmist use such, uh, such a thing like that? Because we only see the, um, the, the magnification, the, the magnitude of perfection of God's word. God's word is so perfect, it's basically astronomical. So, like gravity, you can only really see gravity when you're looking at the, the magnitude of mass and that kind of thing. So, the first example is in Psalms 19, the word convert, shuv in Hebrew, is to return or turn back, to turn, to return, to turn back. So, just as the law of the Lord turns a human soul from darkness to light, just like that, the sun comes up, the law of gravity turns the night into day, basically when the earth rotates. So that is the first term converting that is an astronomical term and the picture or the analogy is giving you the conversion of the soul. So there's six examples all right in a row um, and they're all right here in Psalms. So, oh, look at that. I made it smaller. I'm trying to fit it on my screen, but then I realized that you can't see everything there. Let's see, video capture. Maybe I'll turn my video capture back on. Okay. So, yeah, I'm trying to get all this, uh, all these things worked out. So, the second part of Psalm 19, verse 7, so I'm, I'm taking it line by line, is, um, <laughs> ah, having a hard time getting this centered on here. Okay, basically... <laughs> Only astronomical laws, again, I, I repeat myself, like gravity, can explain the inerrancy and magnitude of God's word. The sun is a giant, just like I told you in Psalm 19.5, the word for giant is geber. But not only is it a giant, but it's being described as the pillar that holds all of this together. So I'm going to try to resize it because it's bugging me that it's not resized. So I will bring that up there. Oh, I'm going to get it. <laughs> and, uh, okay, almost got it. Close enough? All right. So I'm going to see if anybody, hi, Angela. I see that you're here. I'm um, just flipping back and looking at the chat room there. Okay. So this is the second part of Psalm 19. Second part of Psalm 19. 
It says, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So, the word that I picked out in the phrase was the word sure. It seemed like such a simple word, really. Um, and what it means in the Hebrew here is, um, it's a primitive word, root, to support, confirm, be faithful, to support, confirm, be faithful, uphold, nourish, foster father, foster mother, nurse, pillars, supporters of the door, to be established, be faithful, be carried, make firm, to be carried. So I picked out just, you know, uh, a few quick words to get the point across, to stand firm. So, uh, and the word in Hebrew is aman. So the example here is just as the sun stands firm, generating power, heat, and health. Because of its gigantic mass, it supports all the planets. Because of that gravity, it pulls in all the planets and keeps them in that orbit. The word of God here is being compared. It stands alone, firmly, by itself, supporting life of all men. And that is our source of life. So we can see how the sun, because it is astronomical, is giving us the parable or the, the wording to, to, to give us a clear understanding of what the Word of God is like. It's like sitting in the center of the solar system, supporting everything. That's what the Word of God does for all humanity. And so that's example number two in Psalms 19.7b. And it says, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise simple. And then um, the next one is example number three, third slide that I prepared. Um, can explain the, iner the inerrancy and magnitude of perfection of God's word. Example three. So ex in example three, the sun appoints the seasons and orders the days of the year. So you have spring, winter, summer, fall. You have the equinoxes and the solstices. The Lord sets his appointed times prophetically. So just as the sun appoints the seasons of the year, God sets his appointed times prophetically. And the word that means appoints is in Psalms 19, verse 8. Again, the word of God is being described as um, with astronomical terms. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. And the word statutes is picadim, and it basically means to attend, muster, number, reckon, visit, punish, appoint, to appoint or assign. So just as the sun is appointing and assigning all these seasons and all these times, the Lord is setting appointments and seasons and times for prophecy to happen. And then um, example number four is Psalm 19, verse 8, part B. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. And the word commandment is basically uh, a commandment uh, of man or a commandment of God. A commandment is a, of code of wisdom. So what we have here is just as the sun commands the motions of the planets how does how does the sun do that well it does it by its great mass and the distance because if you have a, a certain distance and you have a certain mass you're going to have the gravitational formula that's all you need to get gravity is mass and distance so we repeatedly have um, mass and distance being explained <clears throat> and the in the scriptures, especially in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 12, um, God says that he measures a span and weighs the mountains in a balance. So that's exactly what you need. The Lord commands the motions of men and Satan, just like the sun commands uh, all of this by its very existence and by these specific codes. These codes are what determine its behavior. 
The Lord commands the motions of men and Satan. And it says in Daniel 5.25, Thy kingdom is weighed, numbered, and measured. Daniel 5.25. So we almost have the same exact um, measurements and numbers there. Same, same exact code. So again, the heavens are a picture for the how the Word of God works. And so the only way to describe it is with astronomical terms. If we didn't have astronomical terms, we could not, uh, I don't think, accurately describe the commands of God. Go. And um, so here we have example number five. Example number five, again, is Psalms 19.9. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. Um, this word is a mod, and I find this one particularly fascinating because we saw that the sun has a circuit that it runs, um, but only from our perspective only from the psalmist's perspective, because the psalmist says, I'm looking from horizon to horizon, and I see it go, but when it goes into the bedchamber, he knows it completes the circuit, but he doesn't see it, because it's on the other side. So here we have a picture of the sun standing still. And the word to stand still is a mod, and it's, in the, it's the word enduring. Enduring, just standing there, holding its position. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. So just as the sun stands still in the heavens, maintaining his position, his station in the center, controlling and governing everything, the Lord and his word stands forth alone as the one and only Almighty God, uh, giving us that support, um, to stand there and hold his position of truth. So again, astronomical terms is the only thing that really can completely accurately describe something as magnificent as God's word. So we see in example number six. Um, now this one is, again, Psalms 19.9. This is all within three verses of Psalms 19. It's when the Word of God is being described in astronomical terms, the only accurate way to describe it. Um, and this is the word judgment. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. So this is the sixth example. Just as the sun governs time... For every other planet so you have um, the Sun here sitting in the middle it does it doesn't have a year it doesn't have a uh, time but it determines how long a year is on each other planet so it's governing and it's commanding it acts as a law giver so just as the Sun does that the Lord governs over men on the earth so those are the six examples. Now, actually, the Word of God is described with six different words. And um, like the judgments of the Lord, this word would be judgments, the sixth word. And um, it's described um, at our, the judgments of the Lord are true. So there's this descriptive word here, true, and then there's an action verb, which is actually altogether righteous in this part. So I'm going to show you the six words. This is all in Psalms 19, 7 through 9. So the first six words are perfect, sure, which is one of the words I put in the diagram, right, pure, clean, and true. And you can see Bollinger's notes. Um, for this. He doesn't really list all the words. I just looked at it and counted them myself. And then there's the six um, verbs that are, he says the verbs are astronomical in nature. So the first one is the, the first slide that I had, converting the soul. This is the sun converts from darkness to light. 
making wise the simple was the second one, rejoicing the heart, enlightening the eyes, which is obvious with the sun, enduring, which is the, the, the standing one, righteous, and, um, and then this is actually going back to talking about that circuit that the sun travels in Psalms 19, 5 through 6. So you have the circuit from the viewer's viewpoint. He's only seeing half of the circuit. So I don't know if you could see me highlighting it there. Um, but it lights the whole entire earth because it's, it goes all the way around from the viewer's viewpoint. So you have to remember that from the viewer's viewpoint he, he it's looked like he goes into the bedchamber. But that sunlight never stops. There's nothing hidden from the light of the sun. Just like from God's eyes, nothing is hidden. But from our viewpoint the sun is covered as uh, as is described here to be covered night side where the sun is covered. That is the beautiful uh, analogies that I have found in the Psalms but I also found um, using those same words uh, in Psalm 119 even more analogies so uh, I could cover that but basically what I wanted to cover this is why I started out with Psalm 19 in the first place is the there are cycles of the sun and the moon and God uses the cycles. Um, the sun goes uh, from our viewpoint we have a solar year 365 days and the moon is 354 days so it's 11 days short. Um, it's 11 days short of a solar year. And what's interesting about that is when you think about that 11, if you go to Deuteronomy, now this is when they were in the wilderness. Okay, Deuteronomy 1, verse 1, actually verse 2. Here it is right here. There are 11 days journey from Horeb. Now Horeb is um, over there by Mount Sinai. So that's when they were um, by Mount Sinai. It's 11 days journey from Horeb by the way of Mount Seir. So Mount Seir is when they went up from Mount Sinai and there's uh, at the top of the gulf there of the Red Sea. That was Mount Seir. And then under Kadesh Barnea, it was only an 11 day journey. They could have, it took them 40 years. They could have been in there in 11 days. The difference between a, a lunar year and a solar year. So I wanted to mention the 11 days. So if I show you, I'm going to show you this other PowerPoint slide that I have prepared here. And that is this one. Okay. Why isn't it? Oh, it's got this other one still open. There it is. And I'll do reading view. Okay. So we know that there is uh, two eclipses that go across America and form an X in um, 2017. It goes from the top here of America and across it. And I didn't want to go to that slide. Hang on, I gotta go back. Okay, I accidentally clicked it. So this, this is the 2017 eclipse and this is the 2024. You see how they, they cross each other. Well, the cycles of the sun and the moon God set and I think he set it prophetically to happen um, exactly over 2,300 years. 
So I checked the um, catalog. They have a catalog on the NASA website, Five Millennium Canon of Solar Eclipses. And there just so happens to be another set of solar eclipses that cross over America like this 2,308 years ago. And so that would be 292 BC because this is um, numerical, so they put two minus 291 because um, there's no year zero. But that would be 292 BC when this one took place which is almost the same exact pattern as the one in 2017. And then exactly seven years later than that, so there's a seven year difference here, just like there's a seven year difference between our two eclipses, there was an eclipse in 285 BC that went in the same pattern as the one coming up in 2024. Now the difference in between these eclipses is 2,308 years, but the more, more recent one in 285 BC, if you count that to 2017, that's 2,301 years. So I thought that was really interesting because um, the moon, if the moon goes 2,300 years, it's short by 70 years. So, I was preparing a chart here, I did not finish that one, but this is my last wilderness chart. Um, there's a lot on here, but this is what I want you to focus on. The lunar impact of 2,300 years is 70 years. So that kind of ends at 2018. And that's going from uh, 2,300 years ago. And so from 1948, you have a 70 year lunar period. And it's interesting that God said um, that the distance from Mount Horeb to Kadesh Barnea was 11 days. The difference between a lunar and a solar year. That's the distance in between until it finishes. And uh, here, so you go to 2018, if you add the final 2300 day period, which is 6.3 years, that gives you a total of 76 years. And that is the exact, that's the ecliptic cycle of the moon. Every 19 years, so that fits four cycles of the moon. So now we have the cycles of the moon fitting in perfectly with the cycles of the sun from 2,300 years ago. Um, and Numbers 14.29 kind of gives us the cycle. It's kind of like the life cycle. Um, your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness and all that were numbered of you according to your whole number from 20 years old and upward. So that means the cycle starts over at 19. So if this is the last wilderness, this period here, 38 years, then some, uh, you know, some people could have entered that wilderness at 38 years old. You see? And they would have Oh, I guess it automatically, um, anyway, so you have the 19 years here and that, that is the end of a cycle. I think that's what, um, that's one way to look at this carcasses shall fall in this wilderness. So in the last wilderness here, when we get to the very end, um, there's going to be a time when Satan's here and he's going to be um, challenging the people by saying that he's Christ. So he's coming too early. He's the lunar, he's like a lunar eclipse. He's going to cut in front of the sun, uh, steal the light, steal the glory. Uh, so a lunar eclipse is kind of predictive of him, of Satan trying to steal the thunder and the glory from the Lord. And um, so there's not really a need for rapture. 
because it's all deception. It's not um, seven years of torture, murder, and mayhem that many preachers preach. But uh, the woman is always protected, as it is written in Revelation 12. And um, when he's here, it's going to be a spiritual death. So that's what this is. Your carcasses shall fall in the wilderness. It's the spiritual death at the end of all these cycles. Because the moon goes through cycles, and the sun goes through different solstices. And when the sun and the moon stand still, meaning they reach the end of their cycle, that's when the Lord returns. So he put this, this gigantic clock in the sky um, that uh, interlocks with all the prophetic timelines given to Daniel. So um, let me see if anybody here has any questions. Take any questions if anybody has a question. Um, but that's the that's the exciting part with that. And I've been wanting to cover that, and that's why I started with Psalms 19, is I wanted to cover the um, I wanted to cover those cycles of the sun and the moon because the moon tries to get in get in there before and say. For instance, if you look at this year, 1948, you might say, oh, that's the year of the return of, of the Israelites. But it's actually not because um, the people that are over there claim to be of, of all the tribes. They claim to be of Israel. They claim to be of Judah. They claim to be of Levi, the priest. They can't be from all the bloodlines. And, and we're warned in Revelation 2, 9 and 3, 9 that there's, there's people that say they're from Judah and they're not. And they're lying. So um, that would be the lunar impact of a whole generation. And that's basically this 2,300 years is a lunar period that's trying to come in and usurp or take over the time period. And then we have 2,300 days, and then that would complete the cycles of the sun and the moon. Lots of bad kitty cats here. <laughs> so, um, that, I guess that's it for tonight. It's just uh, a, a short study on the number 19 and um, the 2,300 days, the prophetic days that Daniel was given. He's actually given the cycles of the sun and the moon. A more perfect, this cycle is more perfect than any cycle that we have today. And um, you can see that in the solar eclipses and how they cross after 2300 years. So it actually perfects it down to the minute. So the, the moon, as it rotates every 19 years, comes right back around to just about the same place at just the same phase and on just the same day of the year. It's only two hours off. Everything else is perfect except for that two hours. So if you multiply that by 2300, that gives you 11 days. Too many. But it has 11 days short. So in the 2300th year, those 11 days, too many, meet up with the 11 days that the moon is always short, and it's perfected. So the sun corrects the moon, which is another analogy. that The sun is picturing Christ, and the moon is picturing Satan, trying to usurp the authority and take the time and take the generation and take everything. But we, all, we know in the end God wins, and... Um, we need to continue studying his word and um, to get that seal in our mind and in our forehead and do his works. And um, remember that, you know, if you see a supernatural being, Jesus said, don't be deceived. If he brings lightning down from heaven, remember Revelation 13, that that's exactly what it said the Antichrist would do. The second beast in Revelation 13 is the Antichrist. And he uses the first beast as a vehicle to control the world. So 
like a political system he kind of uses the control that he's established since this year 1948 he's been working on it probably a lot uh, a lot before that so there's another timeline that um, is indicated by 1948 and that is the 20 years of Daniel, which is seven years of years. Um, but Daniel's years were 360 days and had a 30 month, the prophetic year has a 30 month calibration, um, 30 day calibration. And that's the 1290. So maybe that's another timeline I could get into in another video. Um, but basically, when you add that 30 days, you come right to 1948. From the King of Babylon to 1948, it's 2,550, because you add the extra 30, years. So there's seven years of years that the King of Babylon, that men ruled over Satan's kingdom. Until 1948, it was given to his children, the final generation. So that all lines up with the statue of Daniel being the kingdoms that ruled over Jerusalem. So you got the head of gold, obviously that's Babylon. The, the chest of silver is Persia, the Medes. The Medes and the Persians, two kingdoms. And then um, now in the waistband you have the uh, bronze which is Alexander the Great, but his kingdom was split into four. So the thighs were also of bronze. So you get the belly and the thighs of bronze. So that brings in Rome in the bronze because Rome is part of one of those four that the kingdom was divided up from Alexander the Great. And then you have the legs of iron is the Mohammedan kingdom uh, started about 636 AD. Uh, they built the temple on the, the Mount of Moriah in 688 AD, which is about um, 1260 years to 1948. So again, we have, uh, we have that Daniel timeline prophesying exactly what would happen in the end days. And then uh, we've only uh, 1335, and blessed is he who, who waits until the 1335th day. Um, and if you count from 688, it brings you to just about 2024. Um, but you have to add a year for error because there's 12 months in a year, and we don't know exactly what month of the year a certain thing happened, and it says to wait until the end of it. So that puts you about the same time, right about 2024 to end in 2025. Because we also know that their year overlaps our year right in the middle. Just to make things, you know, you got to have a margin of error of at least one year. Maybe two. Because of the overlap and because the year is 12 months and you don't know where in the year, the prophecy started in the prophecy of 1335 says you got to wait until the 1335th day that means you got to wait until the end of that year to get that blessing the very very end the very last day um, so Daniel was given all of prophecy with no gap uh, in the statue and in the timelines and um, and the timing of the sun and the moon. So uh, it's a really exciting prophecy and I'm glad to show you. Oh, I think I need to move my picture. Maybe I'll just take it off. So if you watch till the end, you can see the whole chart that I've been showing, but you probably couldn't see this part of the chart. Let me see. Yeah. So maybe I could have moved it up. Yeah, this is still a work in progress. I'm still trying to get all of this. See, I could have moved it up like that for you to see the, the whole chart. Uh, so anyway, everybody have a great night, and thank you for watching.